Hi folks, welcome back to part two of making clear plastic from milk and then we're going to make some stuff with it. We're going to make a face shield and we're going to make a uh, face mask insert. Um, and we're going to use the uh, stuff that we made in the previous video and what we used was milk. And we made stiff plastic, hard, and then we made uh, the flexible stuff. If I can find one. There we go. Flexible stuff. Okay. Now, to make this, uh, refer to the previous video and then uh, jump back over here. The first thing that I want to make is a face mask insert. Uh, now here's a uh, face shield and here's a face mask. And uh, let's explore very quickly uh, some of the limitations of this and how we can improve it to a very great degree. This comes from China. It's a stretch fabric. And uh, when you hold it up to the light, well, you can see through it quite well, even though it is double thick. So, uh, how face masks work uh, is uh, the mesh is intended to capture a water particle or dust particle, and that's where it stops. Now, that's dependent upon a few things. One, obviously, is the spacing between the threads. Now, this is quite a uh, large weave uh, with a lot of gaps in between. So, uh, in a situation like this, the only way that it would stop a uh, water droplet or dust particle is with a direct collision of one of the threads. Now, uh, you can improve this with uh, inserts and uh, they are something that you put in between to improve the uh, filtering capability of a face mask. And you may have heard something called like N95. Well, an N95 is 95% uh, effective. Now the unique quality of plastic made from milk is it is a superior oxygen barrier. So um, considerably higher in the numerical value of efficiency of stopping a uh, water droplet because it even blocks oxygen. And it's an ideal situation for something like an insert. Now another problem, well, a couple more problems with the uh, inserts, of course, the N95, it's made from a, a non-woven poly, I think, ethylene. And the problem with it is that there, it's becoming a short supply. It's also mostly manufactured in China. So, to solve those two problems, well, let's go to the fridge and get some milk. Now, like the mask, the face shield also has a couple of limitations. Now this plastic is also a very good barrier. And this is polyethylene. And it's clear. You can reuse this. The, uh, the milk plastic, uh, unless you treat it for moisture, it will degrade. However, the advantage still remains. This comes from China. It takes a month to get, and they're expensive, several dollars. <clears throat> this costs about one cent to make, and uh, all we have to do is go to the grocery store for our components, and we can have our product the next morning ready to go to serve us. So, a lot to do here. I've got some uh, doodads laying out here. Uh, I'm going to lay out some grid work and get to cutting and seeing what we can come up with. All right, let's get rolling. So, 
So before I uh, begin fast forwarding, I'm going to go over a few uh, characteristics of this and why we're doing this. Uh, here's the N95 mask here. And uh, folks are buying these and using these as inserts for these, and that's just great. Uh, one issue with these is that uh, this is a non-woven uh, polyethylene uh, material, I believe, and it's uh, 100 cents getting hard to get. And uh, so we can make up something real quick here that I think is going to uh, serve us very well. Now, the unique quality, of course, is that uh, casein has a very good oxygen barrier, superior. And uh, this is why this is used in food packaging. So an ideal situation right here. What I'm looking at is 13 by about uh, 9 millimeters. So I'm going to chop that down. Now, you'll see from the condition of my sample here, uh, it takes a lot of trial and error. You're going to get, uh, if you're very careful, you'll get uh, only a 75% failure rate on uh, what you pour. Uh, that said, I've got quite a bit of uh, good stuff back here, and I'm going to be making up some stuff. First thing I want to do, of course, is this. This doesn't have a pocket for an insert, so I'm going to cut one in this and get rolling on it. So probably about now is a good place for the fast forwarding. Okay, so this base plate, it's about um, 19 and a half millimeter uh, by about 52, uh, considerably larger than the uh, sample disc that I have made. So what we're going to do is uh, show you another uh, thing we can do with this type of plastic and uh, we can heat seal it. So what we're going to do is pick a nice one for the high piece and then the other pieces we're going to go around the edges. And then at the end we're going to attach a piece of Velcro so that we can use this hat, which is just a 100% cotton hat. 